Welcome back to Real Repairs for Real Customers. My name is Rick. You know, when repair technicians get together, we swap stories about our successes and our failures. And it's kind of humorous sometimes when we talk about all the mistakes we make. But it's the mistakes that give birth to new ideas because we face the challenge of coming up with something better. And that's really the backstory behind this video uh, today. The, uh, originally, I repaired an Audi door panel, which is rather a heavy vinyl. And I used the vinyl repair compound. And the customer comes back after a week uh, uh, complaining about the repair. So I looked at it, and sure enough, the finish was wrinkled right above the repair. Now the repair held fine. So I had to look at the customer and I said, well, here's what happens. The repair was more flexible than the surrounding vinyl. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that out and I'm going to put in a repair that's a little heavier, a little more rigid, and therefore the finish won't wrinkle over top of that. So he said fine and everything's been fine since. The repair today, though, that we have is a Lexus door panel, but it's very much the same kind of vinyl. So I'm sure you'll appreciate the thought process behind this approach. Now the format for this video will be uh, different. This is actually a two camera shoot and this is done for a prospective client. Uh, and we've done that in our video studio. We also do the graphics and the audio in our recording project studio. Uh, actually, we do everything from concept to shrink wrap. So what we've done, uh, since we've had to eat the production cost of the original video, we've repurposed the video only without sponsorship this time, and so you're the beneficiary of that. So let's go to work. I really can't fault this plumber for trying to fix his own door panel. After all, when I try to do plumbing, I usually end up in a dilemma as well. As usual, we're going to start with cleaning and prep. These are steps that uh, can't be skipped, of course. So I get requests for videos in real time, but uh, let's be honest, we don't want to sit and just watch paint dry, do we? <laughs> so first of all, let's get this garbage out of the way. Here I'm warming up the vinyl to soften it and get it to lie down better. And then if you cool it in place with the aluminum bar, it really does help to flatten it out. Some cyanoacrylate gel will help to keep this vinyl attached to the foam while we go about the process of repairing.
Now, using the airless plastic welder, we can melt in the FiberFlex ribbon. Looking at the ribbon itself, you can see that it is flexible, yet uh, it'll be bulky enough to do supporting here in this armrest, and extremely strong. As a suggestion, do a little bit at a time and allow it to cool down between layers and you'll have better control. You'll find that the aluminum chill bar helps to shape it as well as to cool it so your next step will be more effective. Once the main part of your repair is filled in, cool down your tip and lower the rheostat so that your iron is now a bit cooler. That way you avoid digging in too deeply and you can just smooth only the surface. You may find sometimes that 100 grit sandpaper helps to reveal the high spots A guide coat of the color allows us to inspect our progress so far. And as always, it's an opportunity to assess our color and to see what uh, changes we need to make, if any. I really like to take time to make this first structural step as neat as possible so that I don't need so much filler as a cosmetic step on top of this. You can see how the guide coat helps when determining the level as we're sanding.
When we talked about the repair being the same weight as the vinyl, this is what we were looking for. Padded dash filler is a flexible polyester filler which will allow us to contour the repair while even yet adding a bit more to the structural integrity. So once it's cured, we can hit it lightly with 100 grit sandpaper to get the high spots off. And while it's not recommended to wet sand because it does absorb moisture, I have better results wet sanding with 220 grit. Just be sure it's dried afterwards. Here I'm cleaning up with some silicone wash, which will also help it to dry out. Once again, a guide coat to see our progress. Now this will be the final coating. This is a latex air dry filler. So I'm going to spread it with a bounty paper towel with the color in it. That way it won't be too dry to spread. Spread a thin layer, then dab and stipple a texture This is one of the best methods for hiding a repair area. Once it's dry, we're going to knock down those pointed tops with 400 grit sandpaper, just lightly skimming across so we flatten the tops. Now with the corrected color in our gun, we're going to use low air pressure to get droplets and so this will blend our grain. Interestingly, a cheap Harbor Freight paint gun seems the best for this kind of work because as you decrease the air pressure, the droplets keep getting bigger, allowing you to dial in the texture size to your liking. Sometimes a better gun doesn't allow for such large texture. So 
So basically, you just select your texture based on the amount of air pressure. Here again, flattening the tops of the texture makes it look so much better. And that's with 400 grit sandpaper. Now it's time to do just an overall blend of the texture lightly. Now once this step is done, increase the air pressure at the gun until the paint just atomizes well for the final blending top coat color. So for this particular door panel, it's obvious that blending the color out a little bit further will give the whole panel a facelift. There is no need to do any specific masking here since we're using a water-based color. If we come back right away, we can just easily clean up any of those trim pieces. And that's all there is. We've got a happy plumber now. <laughs>